The producers and distributors of Tech AV audiovisual training aids welcome you to the Compressed Air System series. This is module number one, in which we shall overview typical compressed air systems and we will discuss safety aspects. You will find compressed air systems being used to power tools and plant equipment in virtually every factory, assembly plant, construction site and industrial workshop. Using the power of air to drive machines is known as pneumatics. Tools that are powered using compressed air are referred to as being pneumatic tools. Compressed air also powers the pneumatic actuators that are used in many robotic processes. In large factories, there will be the need to generate very large quantities of compressed air. A compressor room is usually situated a short distance away from the main factory in order to keep the noise and the heat generated by large compressors from causing discomfort to the workers in the plant. Typically, an industrial air system consists of the following major units. A compressor, an air tank or receiver, and air lines and connections. It is the compressor that generates the pressure and the flow of pressurized air throughout the compressed air system. There are various types of compressor, each designed according to the type of use and the needs of the user. Most fixed type industrial compressors are powered using electric motors. Internal combustion engines generally power mobile compressors such as those used on construction sites. In this series we shall concentrate upon the two most popular compressor types namely reciprocating or piston type compressors and rotary screw type compressors. All compressors, no matter what type, draw air from the atmosphere and then compress that air, thus charging it with energy in the form of pressure. Having been compressed, the air is most usually stored in a receiver. In practice, a receiver is usually known as an air tank. Sometimes receivers may be very large and stand separately away from the compressor. These units are called freestanding tanks. Other receivers act as the support for the compressor and the drive motor. This kind of arrangement is known as a tank-mounted compressor. Air receivers are classified as pressure vessels and, as such, are made and maintained in accordance with strict industrial safety regulations. Receiver sizes are usually stated in terms of the volume of air that they are able to store. Small receiver sizes are normally stated in litres, whereas large receivers are generally stated in cubic metres. In order for the air to reach the working units, it has to flow through a supply line, usually known as the air main. An air main is constructed with special steel tubing. The international color code for compressed air lines is cornflower blue. An air main may have to distribute air over quite long distances, as is the case in large plants. There are basically two ways in which an air main can be set out, namely a branch system where the main splits off in various directions and terminates at the end of a branch or it may be set out in a loop system where the airflow can circulate. Loop systems are best suited to applications where several working devices such as power tools are in use. A branch line is usually used to supply air to a single heavy consumption device. Branch lines often feed into an auxiliary receiver, 
designed to supply a particular machine or section of the plant. At various locations along the air main, you will find user points or outlets into which working devices may be connected. In a properly designed system, a user point is fed off a drop leg. The lower section of a drop leg acts as a water trap. A drain cock, or valve, allows for water to be drained off when necessary. We'll return to this feature a little later. This then is a very basic and simple compressed air system. A compressor to generate the pressure in the air. A receiver or air tank to store the energy contained by the pressure of the air. And an air main to convey or distribute the air to user points so that the air can be used to drive working units. There are two main problems that all compressed air systems have to cope with, and these are water and dirt in the form of solid particles. Every compressor draws air, that is to say it compresses, from the atmosphere that surrounds the compressor. Unfortunately, the atmosphere is far from perfect, and in it you can be certain that there will be water vapor and dust present. These substances are harmful to the operation of both the compressor and to the working units alike. Preventing dust from entering a compressor is fairly easy. We simply fit an air filter to the inlet of the compressor and this prevents most of the dust, or solid dirt particles, from getting inside the system. Water vapor, on the other hand, is not so easy to prevent as it simply passes through the filter along with the other gases of the air. As a result of compression and of cooling, the water vapor within the system condenses, that is, it changes to its liquid state or water. This water within a system is known as condensate. It is for this reason that all receivers have a drain valve situated at the lowest point of the tank. Drain valves, also called condensation valves, are there for the express reason of releasing condensate from the tank. The drain valve in a drop leg serves exactly the same purpose. Opening this valve releases the condensate that settles within the pipework. Some moisture, however, will still remain in the airline. Various devices such as moisture traps, after coolers and dryers are sometimes included into a line in order to remove or trap moisture depending on the dryness of air required by the operating units. We shall look at some of these devices in Module 4 of this series. Let us now look at some important control devices that will feature in virtually all compressed air systems. One device that is very necessary is a pressure gauge. A pressure gauge lets us know what pressure is being held within the system. A pressure gauge can be situated anywhere in the system, but most commonly it is located at or close to the receiver. Gauges may read in bars or kilopascals. Some gauges may also provide readings in the American system, which uses pounds per square inch, or PSI. All receivers must include a safety valve, sometimes called a relief valve. A safety valve is a device that prevents the internal pressure of a system from exceeding a preset value. If this occurs, then the safety valve will release pressure into the atmosphere. When a compressor is operating, the system pressure will build up and, at some point in time, the compressor will be caused to either stop running or, in some cases, to stop pumping. On this particular unit, the compressor will cut out when the pressure reaches around 7 bars or 700 kilopascals. This is achieved through a cutout switch. The cutout switch controls the electrical power to the drive motor and is operated by air pressure.
As air is used up and the pressure drops in the system, the switch will, at a preset pressure, cut in and reconnect the power to the drive motor. Some compressors, notably rotary screw types, do not stop running even when the pressure gets to the maximum working pressure. Instead, the compressor unloads. In this instance, the drive motor remains operating, but the compressor does not deliver air into the air main. This involves some complicated control devices that we need not be concerned about at this time. From our point of view, we simply need to appreciate that to avoid damage to a compressor, no matter what type it is, we should always stop and start a compressor by the operating controls, never by the main power supply. The next control we need mention is the main supply valve, also known as the main shutoff. This valve allows, amongst other reasons, for the isolation of the air main so that work can be done on the line without wasting all the stored air energy. Air pressure can be released from a receiver via the drain valve, also known as the condensation valve. Opening this valve permits the draining of the water, or condensate, from the tank, as well as the draining of air should the need arise. This concludes the basic overview section. Take the time now to examine and familiarize yourself with the compressed air system that exists on your plant or in your workplace.